As previously mentioned, the ID field, or primary key field, is an auto number field. So we don't really need it on this form. This being the case, we can switch to layout view. And then we'll select the form field to be deleted by clicking on it one time. And then we'll click the delete button, which is on the home toolbar. And unfortunately, we only deleted the ID field's label. Now we'll delete the field itself. That action complete, we'll open the manager table in data sheet view. And we see that the ID field is still here. We'll finally see how a primary key field works in the very next section. We'll begin this section by double-clicking the department table. Next we'll press the tab key on the computer keyboard one time. And then we'll type in the name of the department in this record, which is sales. Press the tab key again. And then we'll type in the manager ID for the sales department, which is four. Here we'll press the tab key again to complete the first record in this table. The manager ID value in this example relates directly to the manager table. If we open the manager table, we see that Natalie Grants has four for a primary key. Therefore, she is the manager of the sales department. For another example, we see that the Public Relations Department has six for a manager ID. If we open the manager table, we see that Richard Gage has six for an ID. Therefore, he is the manager of the Public Relations Department. We'll begin this section by switching to the employee table by single clicking its tab here. Following that action, we'll make use of the XS2010 window scroll bar to scroll down to the record that we wish to edit. And here we'll double click on the employee's last name which is misspelled, which highlights or selects that entire word, we can then retype at will. Finally, we'll deselect the recently edited table record field by clicking on a blank table cell. We could also use forms to edit table records. We'll make sure the employee table is currently active by selecting its tab here. And then we'll click Create Form Save. We'll accept the default file name by clicking the OK button. Now we'll need to close this form. And then we'll proceed to reopen the form by double-clicking it 
And now we can use this form to edit table records. Navigation controls. Horizontal scroll bar. Tab key once, twice, three times. And now with this field already highlighted, we can go ahead and type in the updated information. And save. We'll begin this section by hiding the navigation panel so that we can dispense with the horizontal scroll bar. Next we'll click home and then we'll single click the new button which is here on the home toolbar. This creates a new record for the table that this form is based on. Please note that we won't enter a value into the primary key field here, as that will be done for us, which is why we deleted this field from the manager form. Press the tab key on the computer keyboard and type in the data for this record's first name field. After completing this record and double checking it for accuracy, We'll press the tab key again, and we're presented with a new blank table record. 